I've always wondered how migrating birds fly so far for so long without stopping. And now I think I understand a little bit better because I just learned one of the most incredible facts and had to share, not least because it supports my pre-existing bias, that the heart is the most alpha chad of all organs. If you're one of those uh, freaks that thinks the brain or the gut is superior, then let me prove why you're wrong. Now, I have long loved hummingbirds. Small, constantly eating, ADHD personality with very special hearts. I naturally feel quite an affinity with them. What's so special about hummingbird hearts? Well, your heart probably weighs less than 0.5% of your total lean body weight. Hummingbirds actually have the largest heart in the animal kingdom relative to their bodies, as their hearts weigh about 3% of their overall weight, which is, of course, because they expend so much energy and they need the animal equivalent of a naturally aspirated mid-2000s Ferrari V10 with mind-blowing performance, yes, but that ungodly high-pitched scream, which is equivalent to the hummingbird's heart rate of about 1,200 beats per minute. Now, I'm sure you already know that hummingbirds need to eat pretty much all day long to have sufficient energy stores for this metabolic monster. So, how do ruby-throated hummingbirds fly for 24 hours straight over the Gulf of Mexico? Surely they would deplete their energy reserves too quickly. Well, studying the superbly named bar-tailed godwit, who is not a hummingbird but is a goat, offers an answer, and it is that the heart is the body's final boss. The bar-tailed godwit can fly for 11 days straight. No breaks, no food. 10,000 kilometers in one go. In fact, the record for a particular tagged bird was 13,000 kilometers. Just think about that for a second. I genuinely cannot comprehend how unbelievable their physiology is. As the time to migrate approaches, subtle changes in sunlight, uh, something I have heard about but don't really observe very often, cause the godwit to eat more fat and bulk up, a bit like me at yesterday's Christmas party. By the time they're ready to fly, they can be up to 50% body fat, and they don't seem to suffer the same complications with this that mammals would, but more than that, their heart asserts its dominance over the other submissive lumps of flesh by literally cannibalizing them. Their spleens, livers, digestive tract, and other weak inferior organs can lose a quarter of their weight as the heart and the bird's chest swell in preparation for their aerial accomplishment. Something I plan to read more about, or, or, or rather something I have read about and didn't really understand, I read a 2024 paper um, and like a bird most of it went over my head, but it's about the changes to the mitochondria that occur. This is migratory bird mitochondria, which not only increase in number, but seem to change shape and function, even how they're connected, which might not sound crazy, but as someone more familiar with mammalian mitochondrial traits, it really is quite remarkable. Indeed, you know, I'm a human doctor. Uh, I mean, by that I mean I, I treat humans, not that I'm... O programa Saúde e Longevidade disponibiliza suas entrevistas apenas para seus assinantes. Um, but I've been so lucky to make friends with and learn from people who know about animal physiology, and while, yes, studying birds reminds me that we are flightless landlubbers whose hearts are more likely to kill us than cannibalize our loser intestines. I'm always wonderstruck by how amazing birds are. I think my favorite thing about moving out of London in recent years um, has been just sitting in my garden and looking at all the birds that we see uh, with my, my two boys. I saw a post this week, I think it might have been shared uh, by my friend Simon Clark, who I'm sure many of you know, which said that climate change could, could wipe out great tits. And if that doesn't motivate you to look after the natural world, then you are truly lost.